What's a protection profile? This demonstration is something that you won't see from any other security vendor in the market today. I'm going to expand all these different features. And all these different features are built per protection profile. This is our IPS profile. You can have any number of these. You can build a comment for what this one is specifically for. Network antivirus. First, we do network antivirus on seven different uh, network protocols. You can enable or disable these. You can do file, file pattern blocking, which if you for some reason you want to block EXEs, PDFs, zip files on any of these different protocols. You can quarantine. If a virus is found, it can actually quarantine that virus. I think at this point most people understand viruses are pretty standard, so not a lot of people are doing quarantine. Uh, comfort clients, this is your, your hash on an FTP or your little Windows file. Uh, transferred in your window section. This is going to let people know that the file transfer is actually happening um, while we're actually buffering and scanning the files. Um, oversized files, you can pass or block oversized files. The threshold is uh, up to 50 megabits. We generally don't recommend much more than 10 unless you have a high throughput unit. Um, most viruses are actually passed in anywhere from 1 to 3 or 4 meg files. Okay. Do you have any questions about that, Brent? Uh, no questions on this section. Okay. Uh, next, we have web filtering. This is the non fortigard white and black listing web content filtering. Okay, this is where you can actually add if you have SquidGuard or Dan's List or you have internal sites where you want to actually add your own white and black listing. You can add those here. We actually do uh, ActiveX cookie filter and Java applet filtering for um, any kind of advanced uh, like for Flash or for web downloads, web resume download and uh, block invalid URLs. That would be like uh, kind of some scripting URLs. Uh, the FortiGuard web uh, service is the one that we offer today. Where we today we rate about 34 million websites in 78 different categories. We'll go right down here. We'll sit, take a look at a category for potentially liable. These are all the subsections that we have, subcategories. You can allow, block, log, and allow override. So if you're blocking. You can allow override for an administrator to go ahead and override, or if you have a group of uh, executives that for somehow need to override the content filtering. Any questions about that, Brent? No, no questions there. This is great. Okay. Um, you, with our override, you can use Radius, LDAP, and Active Directory today. So if for some reason in your reporting you actually want per user activity, you can get per user activity using your Active Directory credentials today. Okay. This comes all the way down through here. One of the uh, potential security violations, even if today you don't have any URL content filtering, um, but you still, there's no good reason for someone to go to malware or spyware sites. So even if you're not using the content filtering, these are still good security features to turn on. They're included in the box. They don't hurt anybody. There's really no reason for anyone to go to a malware or spyware site. Okay, we get it on the spam. Right now, our spam filter on the FortiGate standalone appliance today will do about 90% of uh, spam filtering. It will do reverse lookups, um, kind of your as a nice add on or standalone spam filter today. Um, we can do URL checking, IP address, IP address blacklisting, DNS lookups for reverse DNS, uh, return email DNS checks, band word checks. Um, and you can actually spend, uh, append the um, email itself with a tagline that says, you know, uh, this has been recognized as spam. This can be an add-on or a standalone spam feature in what you're doing today. IPS, you can enable either critical, high, medium, low, or informational. Generally for uh, outbound we or for inbound, we want to alert critical. Because critical, you know 99.9999% that this is an actual virus. There are no false positives in the critical. High and medium, there are potential false positives. So generally for these, you'll want to alert rather than block. If we come over here to intrusion protection, we have signature-based uh, IPS, anomaly-based, and protocol analysis-based for uh, denial services and network-based attacks. Content archiving, this is where you can statistically, if you want to send to a syslog server or you want to send to some other external storage device, you can do that here for all the different protocols. I am in peer-to-peer -peer blocking. Here's all the different um, I am protocols that we support today. Um, you can block logins, file transfers, block audio, and inspect non-standard ports if one of these protocols is port hopping. Brandon, do you have any questions on that? No, no questions there. Okay. Um, next, we have your peer-to-peer -peer protocols which are BitTorrent, eDonkey, Nutella, um, the standard seven protocols we recognize today. We can pass, block, or rate limit these different protocols. 
and you can actually set a file size limit on this day. Some of our customers uh, are no longer using their packet shaping devices and then using Fortinet in addition to security for also packet shaping. Down at the end of the protection profile, here's all the different logging that we can do today. And we have extensive logging um, for both Sarbanes-Oxley or any kind of HIPAA or any other um, logging requirements or compliance you have today, PCI. Voice over IP, you can actually uh, limit requests, limit invites, limit call setup. We're actually introducing IPS and layer seven uh, security features for voice over IP today. And that will be our presentation for today. Uh, if you'd like to get more information on Fortinet, please visit us at www.fortinet.com. Thank you very much.